Amen. <coughs> Amen. Um, let me, before I call the mighty grade fives up, I just, I have to make a comment about Nicole, who landed here from the UK. You know, I was your teacher in grade, what grade was that? Grade two. And I thought I taught you better than wearing holy jeans to a holy service. I just, but anyway. So let me ask the following grade fives to come up. And then they need to stand on my left, Alex, that's this side. And um, I'm going to call them up. You will see some photos appear of some of the grade fives that can't be here today. So Alex, please, in this order, Alex. And then Caleb. And then Owen John. And not least, and certainly not last, uh, Karen Roman. And then uh, you'll see um, Caleb gets a double showing, and then Matthew can't be here, and um, Wafi has already uh, gone to Johannesburg for his holidays, so we'll give them their Bibles when they get back. But in grade five, very simply, what we do, and I also want to thank the other grade five teachers, we try and have as much fun as possible. That means we spend a lot of time outside. And uh, I think there are two recurring themes that we tried over, the, over this year, but also previous years, to instill in our children that God loves them and they will always matter. Even when they don't feel like they matter, they'll always matter. So it's a great honor to graduate the four of you out of Kid Zone. No more signing in. It's awesome. And I just want to say I love you guys so much. It's been an absolute privilege uh, being your teacher. And uh, I shall miss you so very, very much. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm graduating yet. I'll, I'll have to speak to the senior people. But guys, love you. Let me hand you your Bibles. And then once you have your Bibles, we'll walk off together. Tag. All righty. Nice to see everyone. We're here to announce the next cohort. So, um, what, um, uh, uh, so those are our new preteens. Welcome to the family. We'll see you guys next year and them. Uh, but uh, we're here just to celebrate the, uh, the preteens who will be moving out of the preteen ministry into the teen ministry. Now, that's a, that's a fairly big one. I mean, they're all big. But one of the reasons why this is a big one is, uh, is for the preteens, we meet during service. So it's kind of like, it's like a crossover between kid zone and, and kind of the teen ministry. So, uh, you know, when, when you've got younger kids, you sign them in and everyone knows where everyone is and it's all like quite safe and protected. With the preteens, they're kind of old enough that they come and find us and then they come back and find you and there's no kind of signing in and what have you. And then as soon as they hit teen, they actually come and sit in the church service. So uh, this is kind of the end of outside of church, church, and, and they're kind of joining the big family. So you'll be seeing more of their faces uh, 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 in church. Uh, such a wonderful family. Um, and it's amazing when you, uh, those of you, and I know a number of you have been in the preteen ministry over the years. Uh, it, you really, it's, it's a, they're still kind of sweet and cuddly, not like all kind of like prickly and, and kind of like, deep voices and, and what have you, teenagery. They're still cute and cuddly, but they, they're kind of mature enough to really engage and really, uh, uh, we, we, we love the preteens so much and, and so grateful for them and uh, excited that we also get to see them in the teen ministry as well because we, we're kind of involved there too. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention, mention everyone's name. We're going to come up on stage or we'll ask you guys to come up and then, um, and then Maura's going to say a few words and then we'll hand you your gift. So uh, if we could please have up on stage and you guys can maybe come this side as well, my left. Thanks, John. Is uh, uh, for uh, Arthur. I don't even know where you guys are sitting. Arthur Mitchell, uh, Lene, uh, Naledi, uh, Linnea, and Malay. So please come up, come up, come up.
Um, firstly, I just want to say this is the most wonderful group of children. You've really, it's been such a privilege. Thank you, parents, for allowing James and I to be involved with them. It's also very incredible to see their transition. Wow. Wow. Good luck. <laughs> no, I'm joking. They're wonderful. But it's, they're ready to become teenagers. They're ready for difference. Um, but they've been so wonderful in our class. They always share. Um, I love how they participate. They start asking questions that maybe previously they wouldn't have asked. Um, you know, they, I love seeing their feistiness and their just love for life. And I wish you guys the best of luck for high school. It's going to be super exciting. We will miss you. You're always welcome to come and visit our class and check in with us. Uh, just thank you for the privilege of being your teacher. And thank you for wanting us. It's so encouraging that they want us to be their teachers. So, yeah, so looking forward to seeing what God's going to do in your lives. Mitchell, what does yours say? Keep calm and call Batman. <laughs> and the girls say, what does yours say? So keep calm and be fabulous because they were absolutely fabulous. Hello. They're not prickly. They are not prickly. They're a loving bunch of teenagers. See, see how loving they are. They're even wanting to hug me from down there. So for those of you who don't know, myself and my beautiful wife, I'm Alistair. This is Karen, And we do the youth, or what we call surge. And for those of you who don't know what surge is, you can ask the teen teenagers. They'll tell you. It's a, a sudden forward or upward movement. Amen. And that's what we had this year. We had lots of upward movements. So for Surge this year, you know, I was thinking about how I described 2022 compared to the rest of the years. And I think eventful would probably be the best word to use. We had a lot of events this year. I don't even know if they realized that we had laser tag, ice skating. We went uh, hiking with the campus guys. We had a Hollywood do. We had a teen formal a couple of weeks ago. So it was a lot of events. So I'd say it was a very eventful year for us. And I love these guys so very, very much. Um, to those who just walked off the stage now, we look forward to welcoming you, you, welcoming you next year to join us at Surge. But I'm going to just ask my wife to announce those who have graduated from, very sadly, from Surge to campus. And we're not going to send you any prickly ones, we promise. Amen. At this stage, can we call Layla and Sevi to, um, to the front? And then we have... Uh, Kiara is here, but she's not coming up. Jonathan and Lee are other two that's unfortunately not here. So this is Layla and Sivi, and they'll be moving on to campus. Well, Layla's immigrating. <laughs> she's immigrating. Amen. Amen. <laughs> We're going to miss you. We're going to miss you. She says she's going to come back. You all heard that, eh? She's coming back. All right, guys, please don't be strangers. We hope to see you. A lot of people that leave Surge like to serve at Surge, so we wish you all the best for 2022. Thanks, everybody. Okay, so everyone takes shots at the group that they have, that the, the group is going to, is what it looks like, and everybody loves the group that's coming. So I'm going to say good luck to you guys. Hopefully you'll find us. And uh, to the crew that's going out, um, all the best. Life really begins as you kind of exit campus years. And um, I think for, for me, we're supposed to share a little bit about what does this year mean or what does campus mean. Uh, I think when I think about the campus ministry, I think about very, very deep conversations. I think about impromptu sing-alongs. 
I think about just like laughing, but we're not quite sure what we're laughing at. I think at some point, the point disappears. Uh, and lastly, I think about brying, because we do that pretty consistently. Um, and so I just want to celebrate you guys. Thank you so much for letting me be your uncle. As sad as that is, I've had to accept that I'm now Uncle Remo. Um, and I just hope that you'll keep in touch and you will go on, flourish, and remember to come back and buy us nice things. Um, on the screen, Bonora Kapane will come up. She graduated with an honors, a BSc honors in bioinformatics and computational biology. Yeah, that's good stuff. So she's, uh, she's playing football for the, the University of Stellenbosch up in Johannesburg at USA, so she can't be here. And then I didn't see uh, Nasi Pizeke, who graduates in a Bachelor of Laws degree in LLB from UWC. Yeah, it's a degree. That's a big deal. Um, and then last but not least, uh, Chloe Kricha graduates with a BA International Relations from the University of Stellenbosch. Thank you. Amen. Uh, that concludes the Lord's Supper. Uh, for the Joba guys, one of the things that we are loved for is short services. <laughs> That's why everyone ends up moving here. Um, uh, just a couple of closing thoughts from, uh, from my side, or really from Lisa and my side. Sure, I was saying to the family group leaders as well how quickly the year has gone. Uh, somehow, I still feel like I'm stuck in 2019, or basically we're March, we're March 2020, and I have no idea what happened. Uh, there still remains somehow in my mind, whenever I talk to people about the last time I maybe have seen them, there's this two-year gap, two-and-a-half-year gap where sort of the brain just doesn't compute, and I cannot believe we're at the end of another year. Uh, but at the end of another year, we just want to say from our side, thank you for being the church that you are, and the church family that we are, we could not be prouder. Uh, we feel absolutely uh, privileged to be able to be a part of this fellowship for the time that we have been, but also particularly over the last couple of years. I think the church has been outstanding, um, outstanding on every possible way. People even outside of the church ask me, how did you transition as a church uh, through COVID and coming out on the other side, and I just say, you know what, incredibly well. Uh, we obviously took a beating. We lost people. I think our faith was reshaped and reformed. Uh, but this has been a wonderful year of coming back together again, being able to meet. I think I've never felt so joyful to be able to actually meet together. Uh, I was saying to the family group leaders last week that sometimes, believe it or not, I too wake up in the morning and say, oh, no, it's church. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're speaking. <laughs> you got to go. Uh, it's, I'm tired, long week, what have you, but then eventually when I get here and we sing and we're together, uh, it is such a blessing. So we want to say thank you. Thank you from our side. Thank you for the ministry staff, Mark and Joan, looking after this Cedar ministry and the extensions thereof. Obviously, it's been wonderful to have Rima and Palisa down here and Captain the last couple of years in the campus ministry. Um, Leandi uh, serving as our part-time bookkeeper. It's always wonderful having her in the office. Corin, our uh, office administrator, as well as my assistant. And then the names, just as I thought through this and prayed through it again this morning, the names just keep on coming. Everyone that was up on stage here today, Alistair and Corin have served in this ministry, in the teen ministry, for seven years now when we moved uh, to Cape Town, we actually asked them on Skype or something, I think it was before Zoom days. Uh, we Skyped them from Joburg, asking them if they would be willing to serve in this capacity, and they've done so now for seven years. Uh, James and Maura, and the way that they have served the preteens, and do an absolute excellent job uh, with it. Again, just giving themselves fully uh, to it. James has been obviously a friend to me for many, many years, and has been a trusted friend, advisor, everything. We actually see each other uh, every Thursday morning, uh, every week, uh, just we talk. We talk about spiritual life, we talk about us, we talk about our families, we talk about the church, we talk about the ministry. Uh, he's been an absolute uh, gift to me. The financial board and the role uh, that they play, 
uh, and sometimes tricky decisions that we need, need to navigate financially as a church. At the uh, Compassion Ministry and the work that they do, and the churches continue to give towards the Compassion Ministry, uh, a gift. Uh, Brett and Stephanie that stepped up to lead Kids Zone, take over Kids Zone, in a very tricky time, okay, as we moved out of uh, COVID uh, restrictions and being able to, to come together again. But not only them, but also the parents, where we transition to parents uh, being responsible for their own kids zone, meaning their own kids zone class, and where we now have point people in each grade that are parents in that grade, and they, they work things out. And just seeing this, seeing parents again week after week, serving, helping, teaching their kids, teaching other kids, that's been a gift. Uh, the family group leaders. Most probably, I would say that the most undervalued people uh, in the church are our family group leaders. Uh, and family group leaders, I was saying to them as we closed out our, at our last meeting last year, I was saying to them as well that we don't have church without you guys. Well, we don't have church without the members because then we're just not a church. <laughs> but we cannot function without the family group leaders. They are the glue that keep us together. And some of them have done this for decades. Uh, I was sharing in the group with uh, Greg Bow last week that the first time I came out to church, back in 1992, he was a family group leader. He is still, they are still family group leaders today. So can I just ask all the family group leaders, can you please just stand? Can we just give you a hand saying thank you for keeping us together? It's a tough job. It's like a family. It's like a parent. I love being a parent, but parenting ain't for cowards, okay? And that's what the family group leaders are. They are adult parents of adult people uh, trying to keep us together through difficult times. And, and then just all the members that just pull together, even how we do services these days where we used to have like 500 volunteers on a Sunday, although we only like 250 members, but we have, used to have like 500 volunteers, and the operation team, they actually came up with this idea, uh, Peter and his group and the sound group and the camera and the this and the that and this and that. These guys have make it happen for us every week with our help, yes, but they're the ones responsible here every week, and then the family group leaders pitch in every week in a cycle, and I thought it's worked wonderfully. So thank you to the service teams, thank you to Peter and his crew, but also to each family group for saying, hey, sure, I'll step up, I'll do my thing. It's wonderful to see that when the teens have their turn, they're handing out the Lord's Supper, and then it's, you see the older people again, and then the younger people. So it is, it is a blessing. Uh, it is a blessing to be part of such a incredibly varied, wonderful, mixed bag of people that we call home and that we call a family. So in a way, I want to say, give yourself a hand for just being you and being the Cape Town Church. You can give yourself a hand. <laughs> As I was saying, I think a couple of weeks ago, Lisa became a Christian. She got baptized on the 22nd of November, 1992. Shortly after that, about two weeks or so later, I heard about this event. We, went, we were friends, but not on speaking terms back then. And I heard about this a conversion that she had, and uh, I was concerned. I was told the whole church are vegetarians and all kinds of... <laughs> oh, no, that's interesting. I got to hear about this. Uh, and so I, I, I went over to talk to her about this vegetarian church and what have you, and we started conversation, and those set of conversations set my life on a trajectory that I could never have imagined. Uh, how it would shape me and form me in billions of ways that I didn't even think of or dream of. So shortly after, I got baptized on the 15th of January, 1993. That would be next year, 30 years. And <clears throat> I value my spiritual birthday above my physical birthday, I think it's just a gift uh, that God has brought me uh, into my life. About two and a half years after that, uh, I went into full-time ministry. She followed later. I was 21. It was a strange way how things worked back then. Uh, Reinhardt was in the ministry. He approached me as a brand, I think I was a family group leader, and said, hey, would you want to go up to Joburg for a couple of days? And I said, why? Well, I said, just. I said, Sure. And gave me a bus ticket. We didn't fly people around. Okay, gave me a bus ticket, and up I went. I stayed at Mike Renton's house, 
waiting to be collected by someone for whatever reason. I was collected by someone, taken to Cresta Center, where I met John Muir. Uh, there, John had a chat with me, myself and another brother, and he asked me if I would be interested, as a 21-year-old, I was my final year of studying, if I would be interested in going into the full-time ministry. I hesitated a bit. I thought, yes, yeah, sure, one day, not this day, <laughs> uh, but one day, and sort of we had coffee, we wrapped it up, I was taken back to Mike's house, and that was that. Was that. I thought about it a bit more at that time, and thought, sure, that was most probably not the best way to do things in terms of, this is what I love doing, I think it was a poor response. So I called John back, I said, listen, I just want to apologize, I think my response was terrible, I'd love to be in the full-time ministry, I mean, this is what I love and what we do, or what we, if, if I were offered an opportunity like that, this is what we do anyway. <laughs> um, I said, sure, appreciates the call, back on the bus I went, a week later, Reiner called me again, came over and said, oh, we've hired you in the full-time ministry. <laughs> okay, that's how it went. Uh, that was 27 years ago. Uh, there was a three-month probation period that has turned into, I calculated this morning, 340 months or uh, whatever. What a journey it has been, seeing, seeing and doing so many things. Uh, I've done over 150 weddings in the church. Um, seeing people become Christians has been a, a blessing way beyond our imagined that what we could ever have thought of. In the last two years, though, we've realized, sure, I think we need a break. It's been long. We've loved the 27 years. There's been ups and downs, but it has, uh, it's, it's been hectic. <laughs> The thing about the full-time ministry and those that have been in it can, will know it. I think each job has its challenges, and I don't think the full-time ministry is necessarily more challenging than other jobs. I think each job brings its own opportunities and challenges, and I think there are way more people that work harder than me. Doctors are playing with physical life and death, if you may. People have things. The challenge with the ministry, full-time ministry for me, particularly as a person, is that you never switch off. Never. It's 24-7, 365 days a year, 27 years. You never switch off. And that's part of what the job is. Part is my own personality and my own issues, and I'm seeing a counselor for it now to help me navigate that, that I can switch off. I said to him, let's talk about that. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> okay. But I think we realize we, we, need, we need a break. So we approached our leadership team, board, and eventually an extended group of brothers and sisters and said, listen, we don't know how to do it, but we need a sabbatical of some sorts. We think we, we need a break, and we need a break to regroup. We need a break to find ourselves. We need a break to uh, not be, I was saying to Lisa, I don't know how to not be the minister, So now that's, I don't know how to just be a Christian, and we're all Christians, ministers, but I don't, know, I don't know how to do that, and I need to learn how to do that. I need to learn to just take care of my own soul, and that's it. <laughs> and then in time, help others, but just t take care of my own soul. So we, we need that. We need time to take care of our own souls. We need time to regroup. We need time to... Uh, think differently, to review, to prepare for, I don't know, the next 27 years, okay, the, the next season of our lives. So, uh, like I said, we approached a group of people saying, listen, we, 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 we want to we ask if we can please have a sabbatical. How long, we, we don't know how, what, what we can or cannot have. And shared with them, they were all very kind and gracious even in the meeting. It was awkward for me. I've not actually been in that position in quite some time where I'm sitting there with a group of people telling my story, years on my ins and my outs, and then said, okay, what we're going to do right now is we're going to have like one minute of fellowship that I can get up and walk away not too awkwardly. <laughs> and then I sort of sneaked out the door and said, you guys think, pray, figure out, decide what you think will be best. And so uh, what they came back with for what we are very grateful for is we're going to take a 12-month sabbatical. Okay, so we are going to be on a sabbatical from church ministry for the whole of 2023. 
Okay, what that would mean, some are wondering, turning to the person, what's a sabbatical? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sabbatical is a time where you, you, we're not leaving employment of the congregation, but where we take, uh, campus people take it, lecturers take it, they go study, ministers actually take it, we've le lately learned that the church will does it, the ICC hasn't, but we're getting into that habit. It's a time where we can study, think, reflect, renew, refresh, come back better. That's the, that's, that's the idea. But during that time, uh, we will have no church leadership responsibility, no administrative responsibility, no counseling responsibility, no advisory responsibility, okay? We are going to just be. Now, I must be honest, I said to James a day or two after, I thought, I'm having buyer's remorse here. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can, but I need to. We need to. Uh, so, we're going to we're going to take out a year, and the church will be uh, shepherded by a shepherding team that has been there anyway, and we feel more than confident in each member and each family group leader and how the church has been working and feel like in many ways it will not skip a beat because of who you are, and because of who you are, we are able to do so. So... In essence, today is the last time that you will see me on this stage for over a year, till January 2024. So, please pray for us as we navigate this time, and thank you for allowing us to have it and being who you are so we can. We love you. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen.